Tetanus is a very painful disease in which muscles contract continuously and involuntarily. Normally, skeletal muscle contracts based on signals from inhibitory and excitatory neurons. In this example, an excitatory neuron in the spinal cord fires, releasing excitatory neurotransmitters onto a motor neuron. The motor neuron fires, sending a signal down its axon and stimulates a muscle fiber to contract. Signals from excitatory neurons are often combined with signals from inhibitory neurons. The two competing signals may cancel each other out, reducing the number of excitatory signals that reach the muscle fiber and thereby modulating the force of muscle contraction. In the diseased state, inhibitory neurons fire but they fail to release their neurotransmitter molecules. The excitatory neurons, therefore, act unopposed, resulting in muscle spasms that are characteristic of tetanus. Tetanus is caused by a gram-positive spore-forming bacillus called Clostridium tetani. C. tetani spores are commonly found in soil and enter the body through wounds. Necrotic tissue provides the anaerobic environment required for germination. Growing vegetative cells release a potent exotoxin called tetanospasmin. Tetanospasmin binds to receptors at the ends of motor neurons. The cells internalize the receptors with the hitchhiking toxins attached and transport the material in a retrograde fashion up the long axon and into the cell body within the spinal cord. The toxin is then deposited outside the cell, where it binds to receptors on inhibitory neurons. The inhibitory neuron takes up the toxin by endocytosis, creating an internal vesicle with the toxin inside. The toxin consists of a single polypeptide that has been cleaved in two, with the two parts held together by a disulfide bond. Inside the cell, the vesicle becomes acidified, and at the low pH, the disulfide bond breaks. Part of the toxin behaves as a pore that allows the other to enter the cytoplasm. The neuron contains synaptic vesicles full of neurotransmitter molecules ready for release outside the cell. In response to a neural signal traveling down the axon, the vesicles use vesicle-associated membrane proteins, or VAMPs, to bind to other proteins on the plasma membrane triggering membrane fusion. The tetanus toxin is a protease that cleaves VAMP. Therefore, when the next neural signal arrives, the synaptic vesicle will not be able to fuse with the plasma membrane. The excitatory neuron will act unopposed, resulting in excessive nerve signaling to muscles. The activity of the toxin ultimately causes the victim's back to arch, while the arms flex and legs extend. The patient remains locked this way until death, which can result from asphyxiation.